Now let's transition into talking about Wicked Tree. How did Wicked yeah. Tree, uh, how was that spawn and born? Okay, um, well, there's always been a Wicked Tree films. Like every, since the short film that was my first little break, which was a, an experimental horror film called Mainstream. That's the one that was released on DVD around the world and is now online. And that's what got everything started for me. That was sort of the first post film school project. Um, and everything since then has had Wicked Tree Films uh, on it as like my production company. Wicked Tree Creative is, is new. It's actually just from last year. I mean, when I moved here to Vancouver, the permanent residency process, which once you get it, you can move anywhere, you can work anywhere, you can travel freely, you know, assuming there was no COVID now. <laughs> uh, that it's, it takes a long time and it takes longer than we thought and you can't work during it. So it was a very financially stressful time just trying to coast on savings and my wife's savings and what are we gonna do? And, and at the beginning of last year, I was really like just in a huge rut because it was just like, how long is this gonna, take what are we going to do for you know finances and uh because i couldn't work here or there really um and there's a place on facebook there's a, a group called dream maker i think it's just hashtag dream maker and it's run by this awesome guy charles wrestler and he pairs people up he's basically like a network of like people and resources and he asks people what's what's their dream and someone could be like i've always wanted to make a kid's book and he's will put out a call and then someone's like, well, I'm an illustrator or I know a publisher. And like, he's not about fundraising. He's just about helping you get tools. And my wife put up a post that was something like, you know, I think it was her, it was her dream for me at the moment would be to get some paid editing work, but it wasn't said in like that kind of, you know, silly her, way. Just her she knew dream, how much. Was that her dream? I said her dream for you was to get out of the house and off the couch. <laughs> Well, I mean, she saw it, saw how much, you know, when you're productive, your morale goes soaring. And when you're waiting, it does not, you know, so, um, you know, and I wasn't, that's not something I would have posted because at that time I got confidence was really hurting because it's like you just, I was just answering freelance ads. And since I've posted ads to get other editors and tech people like onto my company, I've seen like, you know, you'll get 600 emails in one day. It's, it can really just be like throwing a dart shot in the dark as to whether even someone opens your email, let them know and goes through all your stuff and decides if you're a good fit. Cause after it's easy to get fatigued after 175 demos in a day, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but after she posted that, they, uh, somebody within like 20 minutes wrote and was like asked to see stuff of mine and wanted to know more about me. It was this amazing human being. The business guru, filmmaker, entrepreneur, her name was Rebecca Renee. She works out of the Bay Area in in Canada, in California. Uh, and she helped teach people how to like scale and expand what they want to do into businesses and just promote themselves and knows everything about marketing. And she was kind of like, let's schedule a phone call. And if, if we click, I'll help him. And we were like, well, we have no money. And she was going to do it just to just contribute. Um, and to see, you know, I guess like my stats start to improve and just, you just uh, be grateful to her for the rest of my life. But she, we met online like once a week for a couple of months and discussed what I wanted to do. And like, here's my goals as more like, personal creative filmmaking here would be my goals if like I could just be editing and we basically settled on coming up with a which it was going to be part in person part remote and now and for the foreseeable for future it's remote uh post company which would mainly be editing because that would be the thing I had the most expertise in but also like motion graphics like audio uh color grading done uh, you know all remotely and we figured this out and I slowly made it basically like the side arm of Wicked Tree Films, which is Wicked Tree Creative, which has evolved into its own. It's it's still in its you know youthful stage. I mean, we only started it last year and right in the middle of the pandemic, which, you know, is awesome or foolish, depending on how you look at it. But <laughs> everything's gone remote. So you can't tell me you need to open, you know, a, an actual office in midtown Manhattan because no one will come to it right now, you know. Right. Uh, so yeah, we launched Wicked Tree Creative last year, and you know, on one hand, it was it's a way to have rebranded myself 
as a company instead of just Joe freelance editor. But it was also a way that I could put out a call for, you know, some of the best motion graphics artists, other junior editors, colorists, audio. Like I have a good ear, but I don't know. I couldn't mix your movie on my own, you know. Um, but I have put out calls and have access to people who can do that, you know. So it's like as as our projects expand, I have a team ready to work like that. Mm-hmm. And they've really stepped up remote collaboration in the past year because they've had no choice. So there's ways to work as heavily with a client as you want to, or as hands off as you want to. I, you know, and uh, Wicked Tree Creative is the company that does that. Uh, you know, we'll probably alter and expand some more once the pandemic is totally over with, where we could actually go places and meet in person. But there's enough ways to collaborate, even in perfect real time now, that. Uh, we can safely get things done, you know, into an incredible professional degree. And it helps the right people as a company that instead of just being like Joe, the freelancer, you know, cause it's just, I guess it's our mindset. We just respond different and better to, you know, you think uh, to a full company instead of, you know, of course. Yeah. yeah. I'd say 90% of what we had done is, has just been me doing it, but I have brought in other collaborators. And then as we expand or as the projects are bigger, uh, we've got everyone ready to go. Mm-hmm. Do you think um, like all, all the new remote things and, and working via Zoom and through Google and WeTransfer and all these remote ways to do things, do you think is it end up being more efficient? Like, would you go like to not have to go to an office, to not have to worry about travel time or, or in-person meetings? Um, how, how do you feel about the change going back? Like, would you like, is it going to settle in the middle somewhere or? I think it's going to settle in the middle somewhere. I think, um, especially because, you know, it, it, any company that has survived the past year is going to have to stay cut back for a while. I was just talking with an editor earlier today who has been doing remote assistant editing work for a television show. And, you know, we don't know exactly. Yes, we see like there's a hope on the horizon with the vaccine and all that, but it's like we are not out of the woods yet. I'd say it's going to be at least another year, year and a half before. I think it'll be a hybrid because you can't say like, oh, the job wasn't done well because I couldn't sit in the room because we can change it. So there are programs so you can literally sit in the room and watch it with no lagging, you know, depending on what your budgets and resources are. Or, you know, you can send people a file and through Frame.io or like Vimeo, I think is doing it, just added a thing now where you can put comments on each moment, you know? Oh, interesting. Nice. Instead of just having to be a call and be like, you know that shot with the sunset? Can you fix that? You know, it's like, so you can get very, very specific. Um, And we'll adapt as we need to. But I, for now, it's, it's still, you know, you can't travel borders or you can't do it. We just, it, it, you know, it's looking better. But for now, there's no reason to change back. But I, but even before that, when I started really getting researching this, I found like post companies that aren't even in New York and LA in the States that are have the most high profile clients you've seen. And they pride themselves on doing stuff remotely. They even will like do, will do live color grading. They'll calibrate it a tablet, send it to the client. So he, they don't have to fly to like Atlanta or wherever the place I'm thinking of exactly was. And you can watch your color be done in real time with the exact, you know, not having the problem where like our, our monitor is going to match, you know? Mm-hmm. Wow. We haven't done oh, Okay. Like so it's sort of like Google drive where you can edit and someone else can watch you edit at the same time. Kind of right. There's a couple of, I haven't tried it yet, but there's a program Evercast, which apparently is like the best in terms of like real time, no latency huh. down to the milliframe type thing, you know, without any kind of delay. Uh, yeah. So I guess it depends on what, you and your client are needing and what you're willing to spend. But yeah, it can be like the people are really in in the room with you versus just do it on your own and then send it over and see what you think. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. I didn't realize that was a, that was a thing they had developed. That's, that's amazing. Well, it had been around for a while as I understand it. And now I think they bumped up its capabilities even more and they've also been dropping the price more. So more people can do it. It's not just the people who used to work at, the studio who now work at home, it could be, you know, just about anybody as long as you have that budget for it. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's I think great. we've got another clip here. We want to show some of Wicked Tree's handiwork. You want to roll the next clip? Yep, let's do roll it. Roll the clip. <laughs> 